inside of a prison in Poland, Ludwig Fischer was led out to the gallows which was inside of a courtyard. There stood a huge gallows in which many war criminals who committed crimes during the Second World War were executed upon. The gallows was fitted with a trap door and Ludwig Fischer was attended on by a number of masked guards and executioners. But things went wrong during his execution. He was a man who had committed scores of evil acts during the conflict and he had been responsible for many executions and he was a man who terrorised the Polish people during World War II. The people of Poland suffered heavily following the invasion of the country which launched the war in Europe and Nazis would execute thousands of people and deport many to concentration camps. But what was the story of the execution of Ludwig Fischer and what did he do? Join us today as we find out and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Ludwig Fischer was born on the 16th of April 1905 in Kaiserslautern and he was raised in a Catholic family. However, across Germany in the aftermath of the First World War, there was great hardship and suffering. In the 1920s, the Nazi party rose to prominence, as did Adolf Hitler, and he would try during this time to take power inside of Munich during the Beer Hall Putsch. Many people who were desperate turned to the politics of the Nazi party, and Ludwig Fischer was one of those. He was one of the first members of the party, joining whilst he was a student in 1926, and whilst at university he attended rallies and speeches for the political group. The Nazis and Hitler promised the people of Germany that they would restore national pride following their loss of the First World War, and they also promised to sort out the huge issues with the economics across the land. Inside of the Nazi party, Ludwig Fischer joined the SA, Hitler's brown shirts in 1929, and these would be involved in disrupting political meetings and briefings. They would also violently attack the enemies of the Nazis and communists, but inside of the party, Fischer would rise to the rank of a Gruppenführer, and in 1937 he was elected to the Reichstag, or the German Parliament. It was clear that in Hitler's eyes that Fischer had a promising future within the Nazi party, and he would rise to prominence during the Second World War. The conflict broke out in Europe in September 1939. It was obvious that Hitler was aiming to bring the continent to its knees with a huge war, as he had spent several years building up his army to a huge extent, and this broke the peace treaty signed after World War I. But the German invasion of Poland was rather savage, and thousands of people would be killed in the illegal incursion, and within days and weeks the whole country fell to the might of the Wehrmacht in the German army. The Nazis had brutal plans for Poland, and the SS had created lists that would see thousands being arrested and deported to concentration camps immediately. Many of these were executed, and lots were imprisoned inside of camps such as Dachau, where they succumbed to the conditions of the camp. But when the German invasion took place, and the country fell, Ludwig Fischer was appointed the chief administrator of the Warsaw district in the occupied general government. He would two years later become the governor of the Warsaw district, and he would remain in this position until the German army left Warsaw in January 1945, with the war turning against the Nazis. But in his role as a senior figure in Warsaw, Fischer was involved in a number of horrific war crimes that brought tragedy and suffering to many people. He was someone who oversaw the establishment and creation of the Warsaw Ghetto. This was the largest of the Nazi ghettos set up during World War II, and it was set up in November 1940. At the height of its use, there were 460,000 Jews who were imprisoned inside of the ghetto. These were kept within an area of 3.4 kilometres square, with this it meant that over nine people were on average living inside of one room. The food supplies were awful and terrible, and people were suffering to a huge degree. The total death toll inside of the ghetto was at least 300,000 killed by either bullets or gas following transportation to extermination camps such as Treblinka or Majdanek. The conditions inside the ghetto were shocking, and the Nazis were intent on eradicating people by hunger and disease, as well as starving them and preventing them getting access to medical treatment. Inside the Warsaw Ghetto in 1941, the rations for Jews were limited to 184 calories a day, in opposition to 2,613 calories for the Germans. The food supplies were a major problem, and a black market economy opened up in the ghetto. It was a horrific place, and around the site would be dead bodies lying everywhere, ready to be collected and dealt with by the authorities. Culture was there in the ghetto, there were some schools also for children, but the hardship was immense. 
Eventually, as mentioned, hundreds of thousands of people would be deported to extermination camps where they were executed within minutes of entering the site, being offloaded from the trains. They were then driven into the gas chambers quickly by the guards. Ludwig Fischer was involved in the creation of the ghetto, and he also issued many anti-Semitic laws that made the lives of Jews even more difficult. He would take part in some of the brutal de-establishment and deportations of thousands, and he was one of those linked to the terror inside the city. He would administer mass executions in public, in which those who were suspected of being involved in resistance were executed in front of large crowds, with their bodies being left out for days. There were also many slave labour programmes that took place too, as the German companies took advantage of the free labour of those who lived in the ghetto. Fischer was involved in this, and as more were sent to the concentration camps, he would continue to rise throughout the Nazis' ranks. Hitler was impressed with his work, however during the Second World War there were a number of attempts on Fischer's life. Polish resistance groups and underground courts would sentence him to death for his crimes against the Polish people. And with this, the plan for Operation Heads was drawn up. This was a code name for a series of assassinations of Nazi officials who terrorised the Polish, and on this list, Ludwig Fischer was top. The resistance began to plot how to kill him, and in 1944, before the Warsaw Uprising took place, Fischer's car was shot at as it was driving near the city. The Home Army Zoska Battalion on the 8th of January had been tipped off that he had gone hunting just outside of Warsaw. The subordinates were gathered and they agreed to attack. Forty men went ahead to carry out the ambush. Fisher's car would be stopped by a steel rope which was strung across the road. Then the resistance members would empty their weapons into the car and the entourage and they would then aim to kill Fisher along with his bodyguards. Around 6pm that evening the cars appeared but someone fired too early and the driver of the first car floored the car and sped through the rope snapping it. The others went through, but nine Germans were hurt, however Fischer escaped without any injuries at all. Following the failing of the Warsaw Uprising, Fischer would also take part in the destruction of Warsaw, in which scores of civilians were executed and slaughtered. The city would be razed to the ground in places, and it's believed that 80% of Warsaw's buildings, including museums and art galleries, were destroyed. There was large-scale looting also, and Fischer was a beast who was responsible for huge amounts of this. He was also responsible for the terrible conditions inside temporary transit camps in Poland that the Nazis established to house people who had been expelled from the city. But as the war turned against the Germans and came to an end, Ludwig Fischer went on the run. He hid out in Bavaria, inside of a town of Bad Neustadt an der Saal. But he was then on the 10th of May 1945 arrested by American soldiers who then interrogated him. Following his identification, he was then transferred to Poland to face the crimes that he had committed there. Whilst on trial, he was accused of huge crimes of murder against the Polish people in Warsaw, and there was very little he could do about his fate. The evidence against him was huge, and on the 3rd of March 1947, Ludwig Fischer was sentenced to death for crimes against humanity. Many of those had come forward as witnesses to testify against him, and they spoke of the brutality and execution that took place inside of the city, and how his actions and persecution caused a huge amount of tragedy. But his execution would be one in which Ludwig Fischer would be made to suffer, as it was an execution which went wrong not once, but twice. On the 8th of March 1947, at the age of 41, inside of Mokotov prison, he was taken from his prison cells to the courtyard, where a gallows had been created. The gallows was a large wooden structure, and underneath it was a set of steps, and also a trap door. The executioners had black masks over their eyes, and Fischer was led to the gallows. He was wearing a long coat, and the noose had been secured around the gallows. However, this execution was botched, and during the first attempt the rope snapped, and Fischer simply fell through the trap door first, and he was not hanged. This then happened again the second time, and there was a lot of chaos inside the execution courtyard with this. But the third attempt was more successful, as when the noose was placed around his neck and the trapdoor was released, Fischer was then executed. Ludwig Fischer was a brutal and barbaric beast of Warsaw, who took part in the executions and deportations of hundreds of thousands of people. He was a man who was responsible for the deaths of so many, but he was someone who could not be executed in a straightforward manner, with it taking the Polish executioners three times to enact their vengeance on a man who was completely evil. Thanks for watching. 
To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.